What's going on everyone and welcome back to the Dion Training channel and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 acronyms that you need to know for the A plus exam. Now I think these are really important, 99% going to show up on the exam. I'm also going to be giving you tips on how to memorize these acronyms. Let's jump in. So why does the A plus exam love acronyms so much? Well it's just a matter of fact in IT. We use acronyms all the time. From setting up a PC to troubleshooting you'll continuously hear the terms BIOS, RAM, DNS, VPN, and for the exam, the CompTIA test makers love to throw acronym heavy questions at you because they love to confuse you. That's just what it is. But don't worry, after today's video, you'll be ready. The first acronym we have is POST or Power On Self Test. Ever turn on your computer and hear a peep? Well, that's POST in action. POST is a system check that happens before your computer turns on. If there's some kind of hardware issue, like a bad hard drive or a RAM stick is missing, it's going to actually report it. You'll be getting beeped codes instead of a normal startup. Our little memory trick for you to remember post is post your PC before it turns on. Remember, post, power on, self-test. On to the next item on our list, which is actually two in one, which is the BIOS and the UEFI. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System and UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. The BIOS is actually the firmware that starts before your operating system loads up. It lets you change different settings with your device, like the boot order, of hard drives, virtualization settings, RAM settings, or troubleshoot hardware issues. UEFI is actually the newer and more modern version of the BIOS. They usually include a graphical user interface and lets you use your mouse and keyboard in order to interact with the different settings of your computer. For example, if you ever need to load up a new copy of Windows and you want to do so from a flash drive, you're actually going to go into the BIOS in order to change the boot order to start with a flash drive you just inserted. And our memory trick for this one one is BIOS or UEFI is actually the coach before the game getting your operating system ready. You are ready to lead these men. Next up on the list is actually a very basic one and a lot of you are gonna know it but it's important and we had to mention it which is actually RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory and it's actually your computer's short-term memory that it uses in order to store things that it needs to grab quickly all the time. RAM is actually very fast. It's much much faster than your traditional hard drive or even SSD. That's why your computer stores information on it in order to retrieve it quickly and the more RAM you have the more information an application you can store on it and the faster your computer runs. It's very crucial. RAM or random access memory is usually measured in gigabytes and that's just a common practice for now. For example, do you ever wonder why your browser is getting so slow and you have 50 tabs open? Well, because these tabs are actually eating up all the RAM of your device and your device can't handle it. So it actually starts storing the information it needs to get on the hard drive using something called the page file, which makes it much more slower and drives you crazy. Our memory trick for this one is actually pretty neat. RAM is random access memory or running apps memory because it has all the running apps on it. All right, next up on the list is the CPU or the central processing unit. The CPU is actually your computer's processor, which could be from Intel or AMD. The CPU acts like your computer's brain. It does everything on your computer. Well, from the name, it's called a processor. So it processes things like files, games, applications, and it does that with the help of random access memory and GPUs. The processor is actually very important and the stronger, smarter a processor you have, the faster your computer is going to be. When you're building your next PC, remember that a CPU with more cores and a faster processing speed is actually better for your computer. And our acronym for this one is CPU, which is actually a central processing unit. It's also your computer's power unit. The next one on our list is IP address. IP address stands for internet protocol address. Every device on the internet or basically any other network must have an IP address. It's like a home address for computers that different computers use in order to reach each other all the time. For example, if you did not have an address, your friends can't send you anything via the mail system. And it's the same thing for computers. Each computer needs an IP address in order to access other computers and communicate with them. Without it, data wouldn't know where to go. For example, your phone, your computer, and even your TV 
all have IP addresses that are used in order to communicate with other devices on different networks, not just the internet. This one is pretty easy to remember, but if you need another trick to remember it, IP, internet protocol address, or internet passport, for example. All right, the next one, that's a really important one, which is called DNS, or the domain name system. The domain name system actually does a very important job, which is to translate human readable names into IP addresses and vice versa. Without it, if you wanted to access a website, you would have to type the actual IP address for the website. Imagine how hard would that be? It's actually crazy. I'm up here because I hate numbers and I chose a field with all numbers. Now, all you gotta do is type in the name of the website that you're going and DNS takes care of all the backend work for you. For example, if the DNS server goes down, you will not be able to get into any website. And if you wanna learn more about DNS, you can check our video here. So next time, remember, DNS domain name service. All right, onto the next one, which is another two in one. It's SSD and HDD. SSD stands for solid state drive and HDD stands for hard disk drive. Both of these are actually storage devices that your computer use to store long-term data on, which means it's non-volatile and is not deleted when you turn off your device. What you need to remember, SSD or solid state drive, these are super fast, but relatively expensive. Most people use those to load heavy programs that they use all the time or just install the operating system so that it boots up faster and it's just easier to work with. And for the HDD or the hard disk drive, what you need to remember is that they're slow, but they're much cheaper than SSDs. And people usually use those to store large amounts of data. So if you want speed, get an SSD. If you want a huge amount of data storage at a good price, use an HDD. These ones are much easier to remember. SSD, solid state drive, and HDD, hard disk drive. Next up on the list, very important also, VPN or virtual private network. A VPN actually encrypts your internet traffic moving between you and the network, keeping your browsing history private and secure. For example, if you're using the public Wi-Fi at an internet cafe and you're not using a VPN, anyone can actually use a packet sniffer in order to access all your packets and potentially get into your sensitive information. For example, if you're just sitting there and you make a transaction using your credit card, this potential hacker can actually sniff all your credit card's information while you're there. That's why using a VPN is extremely important and that's why a lot of corporations and a lot of companies will only allow their remote employees to log into their websites using a VPN. Remember, VPN, virtual private network, or very private network, as I like to say. All right, the next one we have is actually MAC address. The MAC address, or the Media Access Control address, is a hardware identifier that is used on all the devices that connect to the internet. Unlike the IP, which can be changed for any device, the MAC address cannot be changed. The MAC address for your device is constant for its lifetime. MAC addresses are usually used in allow lists and deny lists to prevent or allow devices to log into networks. They also have a lot of other uses that we can talk about in a future video if you want to. Remember, MAC filtering prevents devices from connecting to Wi-Fi. And our trick for the MAC address or the media access control address is MAC, my actual computer address. Last but not least, we have HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol and the S in HTTPS actually stands for secure. The hypertext transfer protocol is actually an application layer internet protocol that is used to transfer data between network devices. HTTP is the unsecure version and HTTPS is actually the secure version. For example, do you ever go to a website and the little lock that should be on the left corner of the screen is actually unlocked? Well, this website is not encrypting your data, so you should not be entering your password or any critical information. Remember, the S in HTTPS is secure. All right, that brings us to the end of our video and what I believe to be the 10 most important acronyms that you should know for the A plus exams. Now, there are a lot of other acronyms as well. To memorize all of those, I encourage you to make your own flashcards all the time and test yourself, especially on the acronyms that you seem to forget all the time. Doing practice tests can also be very beneficial because the practice tests will actually have those acronyms in the questions and it's gonna force you to learn them over time. And if you want to get the best IT certifications out there and the best price on A plus Plus vouchers and multiple other vouchers, you can actually head on to deontraining.com and get your course and voucher right now. Let me know which acronym is the hardest for you. Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.